Hello and welcome to WePC Benchmarks. My name is Seb and today I'll be taking you through the optimization guide for New World. The game has been a popular release, with worlds having thousands of people waiting in the queue. It took me a couple of days to even do the benchmark. If I wasn't done in the morning when everyone was asleep or out of the house, the queue would be an hour long. All for 30 seconds of footage and each time I had to queue back up for each resolution. As changing the resolution in game wasn't enough and I had to restart the game and change my desktop resolution to match. Nevertheless, with the benchmark in a crowded city, you can see the interesting performance. The GPU utilization is minimized and clearly the game is being bottlenecked somewhere else. It is likely RAM or CPU, with our CPU utilization being all over the place and quite high. And then with 16GB set of RAM, it is using nearly half of that. Even so, for the optimization guide we are using a GTX 1050 Ti at 1080p and see a performance of about 30 FPS on average, and so anyone with lower end cards may want all the performance they can. The first couple options here are for your own adjusting of your personal monitor. With the window mode, you want full screen for the best performance, with resolution, brightness and contrast adjusted for your own screen. FOV is also a personal preference, but for better performance, you want to keep it lower without having to show off less with a lower FOV. So for proper settings, we start off with effects, and this option is meant to affect the quality of effects, particles and volumetric effects, so the additional visual effects being displayed. However, taking a close look at this option, comparing the lowest and highest settings, I can't see much of a difference in these options, and that can be seen in the performance of the game as well. Between the four settings, you can see no real change in average frame rate. There is some gain in the FPS there in the top left, as well as a drop in the frame time, so it is beneficial to drop this setting down from very high. So I'd go for the high setting. The next option is for lighting, and this is the quality of the lighting in the game. But similar to the effects option, I couldn't find much difference between all the options. Looking at the light sources and how light is projected, there seemed to be no visual difference. But the option does also have some effect on performance. Similar to effects, lowering the option, it increases frame rate and decreases frame time, without much change on average. Even so, I would recommend the medium setting. The next option is for object level of detail, and is the setting for how detailed objects look, and how much detail is displayed on them requiring more resources to make the object look better. But again, as previously mentioned, I really couldn't see any difference in the settings. Even restarting the game with the different options to see if that affected it didn't show any differences. And that is also shown in the performance, with there not being any real difference between each of the settings. So for this one, you want to put the setting to high as well. Post-processing details is the next option, and is the settings for how the image is altered after it has been loaded giving it that extra alteration to make it look even nicer. And you can spot some slight differences with the color grading looking a bit smoother and nicer with higher price processing options. It does make it more visually pleasing without that much of an effect on the frame rate, with the average deviating just with some error rather than the settings. So for this setting, I would recommend high, as with not much performance hit, it is still nice to look at. The next option is for shadow details, and so the visual quality of them and how they look. There is a visual difference between the settings, with the lower qualities having much less refined shadows that shimmer unnaturally and are more blobby and looking less like what they are actually meant to be. But as usual, this setting has the most impact on performance, with the work that has to go into making them. So I personally don't find them that necessary, and for best performance I would recommend setting them to low. Up next is the terrain details, and it's the quality of the terrain in the game. And the difference can be seen when the terrain reloads, changing between the options, with the lower settings looking less detailed and less refined around the edges. And there is some performance to be gained with this option, with low gaining around 4 FPS on average, and so for this setting, you want to choose medium. Texture details is the next option, and it's another big option. Changing this hangs your game for a couple of seconds as it reloads all textures, and so the difference is fairly big, with the lower options giving you lower resolution textures that are lower quality but it does have the benefit of performance. With this option giving you a few FPS on average, and so it can be a worthy sacrifice, I'd recommend going for the medium setting. Then it's the option for water details, and this is the setting for the effects and quality of the water in the game. And so just normally everywhere else, it has no real effect on the performance or visual quality. And going up to close to the water, you can see the effect of the setting with the quality of the waves decreasing, but not too badly. But the performance increase is quite significant when near the water, and so the medium is the best option for the setting. Then you have an FPS counter. You can leave this off unless you want to monitor your own performance and don't have a third party app. But then you have VSync, and you want to turn this off to uncap your frame rate, which is also the job of the next setting, max FPS. And for this, you want to have it uncapped as well. Then you have the option for player nameplate amount, 
This changes the amount of visible player names that will pop up. So with this setting higher, your game will have to render out more names and can affect the performance of your game with having more of the names appear. And I will say keep the setting to two as there's no real reason to have more and in a more populated area like a city, it can become very overwhelming and very messy with so many names appearing all over. Then you have the last two options, which are for capping FPS in the background, which you can turn on if you're likely to tab out of the game a lot, to free up resources for your other programs in the meantime. And the other option is for dynamic resolution scaling, which will change resolutions for you to try to improve frame rate. So I will just keep this off. So there you have it, the optimization guide for New World, a game with quite the interesting performance. With the custom settings, we're now getting an average of 38 FPS a nice 30% increase over our 30 FPS average with very high settings. Even so, the game clearly has much different averages in, in and out of cities, but hopefully this guide will help you out to get the most out of your hardware and improve the performance in the highly strenuous cities. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.